So, as you guys may or may not be aware, Asmund Gold uh, and Rich were given access to the media tour, which if I'm not mistaken, if everybody got the exact same access, because I've been seeing a lot of videos on the media tour, then they had about six hours to play the game, try out the different classes, all of that stuff. And then they got to interview Yoshi P, which is really fucking awesome. I, I'm very jealous. I'm, I would love to interview Yoshi P, of course, but, and you know, it is what it is. But, um... Yeah, I'm very curious to see what he thought about the, the whole media tour experience. So let's uh, let's see what this is about. Weeks ago, uh, Rich and I got the opportunity to go to the uh, Final Fantasy media tour. And I kind of wanted to tell the story of uh, pretty much what all happened there, what we got to see and everything like that. And just kind of go through the, uh, the experience. Uh, first thing is that they were, of course, very, uh, very understanding with me because, like, obviously... Uh, I'm pretty much the worst person to try to have a, uh, if you want to try to talk to me on a regular basis, it's extremely hard because I just randomly stop responding to people's messages all the time because I'm just, uh, I'm just completely disorganized, right? And uh, they, they were able to put up with that, which I honestly is impressive. And so shout out to them just for even being able to put up with my bullshit. Then obviously we were able to, uh, we were able to play Endwalker and uh, we, we got a chance to log on. Um, I don't know how this happened, but uh, my uh, my character that they gave me for Endwalker uh, was a Lalafell. Female Lalafell. <laughs> I think Rich. I think Rich put him up to it. To be honest, <laughs> I think they did. I think they were like, ah, you know, like go, let's let's go ahead and make things. I watched fun the interview, so I knew. Then we pretty much were able to do a lot of just different random stuff. Uh, we could explore a couple of the different zones. Uh, uh, I went to uh, Charlian. That was the uh, the zone that I think I spawned in at. And the first thing that I did was I wanted to go to, you know, like in uh, the cinematic where they're like, she's holding that bucket. It's like this. and it's. You guys remember the cinematic where Soda Poppin like blew a casket because he was just like, this doesn't make any sense. How does water go up the fountain? <laughs> Pouring out all the water. The first thing I wanted to do is go and see like, where's this water coming from? How's this happening? Right? Like, what, what is this? And uh, this is the first thing I did. And I went over there. I couldn't really get a good visual on it. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll probably actually have to play the game here. Uh, we got together in a group, and uh, we did one of the dungeons. And uh, the dungeon, uh, I like the thing with me is it's very hard for me to tell and give. It's very hard for me to tell and and give a good idea of like what the uh, the dungeons and in Walker are compared to the dungeons in like Shadowbringers because I haven't really done a lot of them but I would say at least for the dungeons compared to the ones that I've done personally uh, these dungeons are much more uh, mechanically invested and I think also they have a degree of mechanics that are what's the word for it dynamic uh, it's not like it does the exact same thing every single time like for example there's one boss where it spawns a bunch of illusions and you have to go to the illusion that uh, is like not doing an emote basically and uh, if you don't do that, all the other illusions in the room blow up. And of course, like it's the only place Spoilers. Where you you don't get blown up is, is near the one that doesn't uh, near the one that, that doesn't do anything. That was pretty interesting. And also, like they have uh, the trust system in Final Fantasy, which I actually did for the first time on this beta. And I didn't even know uh, what this was, but um, I've, I've actually been using the trust system for years. According to, to Zeppelin, by the way, she says that. Um... Thancred got another wrinkle in his noodle, which was something weird for me to hear. I don't know that expression still weird for me. But like she was saying that the NPC's AI is significantly better. It looked like they actually do a little bit of AOE and Thancred was actually pulling like stragglers and whatnot. But uh, I don't know. We'll see how that pans out because currently trusts, trust is just a very slow way to do dungeons and Shadowbringers right now because they don't AoE. They just single target damage. And that just makes every single pull last for like 10 years. So yeah. Because uh, I've done uh, dungeons in WoW and it's been full of bots. So it wasn't really anything new to me. And uh, it's just kind of like having instead of 100 pet, you have three. We had like the people from Square Enix uh, there with us just hanging out, right? Just watching us play the game. And we were just talking about the game and different stuff. Like they were talking about like what they like to do in the game and 
uh, how they got into it, etc. Right? It was like actually a pretty just normal conversation. Then that happened. We did the dungeon, and uh, I tried to kill because I didn't really know what the fuck was going on, right? And so I tried to kill. Uh, there was like a bunch of elephants, and I just started killing elephants just to get a feel for the game. Just uh, I, and like this sounds ridiculous, right? But I was just literally running around killing elephants and finally i see like this other thing it's like kind of looks like an elephant but it's not as big and it's like oh, i'm gonna kill this thing too i hit it like two times the health bar doesn't fucking move and then on top of that it hits me once i go down 20 percent health i'm like fuck and i try running away from it or doing something for it and nothing nothing does anything and i just got fucking destroyed and that's what you get i tried to get the other people in my party to um <laughs> get other people in my party to come and kill it with me, and they they indulged my request, and, and we tried to kill the boss. Uh, oh, Otherwise, just us. killing mosquitoes yeah, with the for, thing. Like, 20, 30 people, and uh, we got it to forty percent. So uh, that, that was pretty fucking good. I, I was happy. Whenever I was playing the game, I felt like uh, Endwalker. It felt to me that the responsiveness of the game and like the animations were a lot cleaner, and they were more responsive. So, like, you know, like, the delay that you would have whenever you hit a button and then the thing happens? That delay was long. This is weird because it was my understanding that they were playing uh, remotely. As in, I don't think they had an actual client. I think they were doing, like, cloud. So that's weird. He's the first one I've heard say that. Also, this, this freeze frame. <laughs> a lot smaller whenever I was playing Endwalker. And I don't know if it was because of the computer I was playing on. Uh, I, I don't know what it was, right? I have no idea what it was. But um, one way or another, uh, it was definitely a much more responsive game. And I noticed it immediately whenever I started playing. After that, I, I went in and I just kind of flew around in like the, the areas. Jesus Christ, what the hell? It's got like a freaking... He's just murdering mosquitoes. And just to see what's going on and uh, just kind of what's uh, in store in the game. I think the areas look great. I mean, it definitely, uh, you know, the most recent expansion I've done so far is like the very beginning of Stormblood, right? Uh, where I just first load in and uh, Heavensward. It, it was a pretty, pretty big improvement in terms of graphics and quality. Oh, uh, yeah. Compared to that. And so uh, whenever I get to Shadowbringers, I'll kind of see uh, what the improvement from there is. But this one's kind of like a big deal. This expansion is like kind of the end, apparently, of the whole, uh, you know, Zodiac and Heidelin thing. And I, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen, really. I, I think I have an idea of what's going to happen, but I think I'll finish Shadow... Do, do, do you have an... You, no, you don't. You, have, you haven't even done Stormblood. You haven't even done Shadowbringers. Come on. <laughs> I'm joking. Maybe he does have an idea. Like, I... I've said it multiple times. I think that uh, a lot of people seem to believe that Zach is just like this this redneck dumbass, and I actually think he's really smart. So maybe who knows? Bringers and then make my prediction. But it's not that they did say that like they emphasize this a million times, right? Is that it's not the end of the of the game because a lot of people, it's like okay, you're ending the big saga that's been going on for like eight years here, and also on top of that. It's called Endwalker. Like, is the game ending, right? A lot of people are wondering this. It's not. Of course, they're not going to stop making the game because it's just massively successful and a lot of people play it and it makes them a lot of money. So they're not going to stop making the game. They're just going to go and and start a new story. It's like in WoW, where like after we killed the Lich King, it was a, a paradigm shift, right? Because like for a lot of people, the Lich King was like the last loose end from Warcraft 3. So I think Endwalker could kind of be... Uh, you know, a fall of the Lich King type thing where it's like this is the the end of uh, the, the story as we know it and then after that uh, it's it's time to start a new adventure. Uh, after that, oh, uh, I went in and I did the, uh, the dungeon again. I went back, I did the, the dungeon a second time and I used the trust system and I played with, uh, I think it was like Alphano, Alice, and uh, uh, Estinian, right? And uh, it was easier. It, like, it was easier than whenever I did it with Rich. And, like, I know, like, Rich, like, I told him this, and he was like, oh. 
He's just jealous of that double legend. He's just jealous of that double legend, dude. That's all it is. It's because you knew the mechanics. I'm like, true, but still. Still. But yeah, I'm telling you guys, like one thing that I really like about playing with bots is they they never complain about me going too fast. They never complain about me not waiting for mana. I never get kicked out. Uh, nobody ever message me as, messages me. Complain for mana? You, you think this is World of Warcraft? <laughs> Complain for mana. <laughs> <laughs> Complain for, imagine having an healer telling you, hey tank, can you take it easy? I need some mana. <laughs> this does not this this does not happen in Final Fantasy. I mean I don't know who you've been running dungeons with, but this does not happen in Final Fantasy 14. If anything, most of the healers will be like, go faster, pull harder, pull bigger pull more and you're like but there's a wall here i don't care you're the tank figure it out blast it down no you're not a tank shoot that wall down pull more pull harder <laughs> at the end of the run asking me to follow them on instagram and it's a guy uh it, it's just it's it, I mean, there's no problems there's no strings attached i just get to uh play the game and then i leave it, it's amazing so yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. I, I thought it was actually very well designed. And I think also uh, one thing with the trust system uh, is that the, the, the same boss that had like the different images that would spawn all around the room that you would have to avoid all of them except one. So the trust system- They know exactly I, I where to go. I asked Enix about this, the, the people that, uh, that were there with us. And I asked them, I was like, do you have like, is it programmed for the bots to like just occasionally do something stupid? Right, to make it more like a player, basically. And they're like, ah, yeah, kind of, but not really. And I've seen Alpha No die to mechanics. Uh, who else have I seen die to? I think only Alpha No. I think Alpha No is the only one who I've seen die to mechanics. Like, I'm not even, he would just like straight up get hit by mechanics multiple times. Uh, what they have in that, in that boss is the trust uh, NPCs just sit there waiting for you to do something so they don't uh they don't do anything until you do it so if you fuck it up everybody fucks it up and i think that's actually that's so cool to me i, I love that it's a really good way of learning things i'm trying to think about everything else that i did obviously i tried out reaper a little bit uh, i didn't really even figure out all the rotations and everything because i had to like check my, my keybinds and everything but I, I do plan on getting dragoon up to uh 80. Uh, that way I can just immediately play it whenever it comes out, uh, Reaper, and I don't have to. Dude, imagine them inviting me to the um, to the media tour. They're like, here you go. You can set up your key binding. And I'm like, I, I want to use a controller. <laughs> and they'd be like, what? Somebody didn't brief this guy. We don't do control. I don't know if they support controllers on the on the media tour build or not. Would have been hilarious though, because I, I can't play the game worth a damn on keyboard, dude. I cannot play Final Fantasy fourteen on keyboard. I'd like jump in there and I'd be like, oh, keys. Yeah, about that. <laughs> I don't know that, dude. I only know how to play with controller. Worry about it at all. So uh, anyway, uh, we we went to talk to the Square Enix uh, the 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 team basically about because we, we got to interview uh yoshi p right everybody probably has seen this by now we got a chance to interview him i was a huge like uh i, I was i was really surprised and i was kind of i was i was I, I was just really happy about that because like honestly uh you know we're kind of new to the community right i play i've I played this i played final fantasy like probably 500 hours at this point like probably more than that uh, I played it a lot, but you know, the fact that they, they'd be willing to do that for us, it was a, it was a privilege and I was really happy about that. I was kind of taken aback that uh, this, this shows you how much more in tune with their community final fantasy 14 is, you know, it's like, you can really tell 
how poorly Blizzard understands their own community with the fact that they've never, I mean, have they ever worked with Asmongold? I don't think so. I don't think they've ever done anything with Asmongold at all. And if they have, it's been like something probably so minor, like so many years ago. The fact that they don't recognize that this person is friggin' massive in their community is completely and utterly insane. And I didn't have stream elements open, so it's going to take me a while to get to that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a big slacker. It's all my fault. But it's, it's just one of those things. Like, you can tell that Yoshi P and his team are just like their fingers on the pulse because they instantly recognize, oh, there's this person who's been playing our game. And, uh, you know, we should invite him to, to talk with us. Uh, speaking of man in the Crystal Tower raid, I met a healer complain to me about tanking and taking damage and wasting his heals, calling me a shit gun breaker who aggroes too much. It's also weird to get angry at people in Final Fantasy XIV Surreal. That is weird, uh, your Legion Live, but thank you very much for the souls. Tip of the hat. Appreciate it. Thank you. That is really weird. <clears throat> Never had that happen to me personally. Uh, that they, they'd be willing to do that for us. And uh, anyway, so they didn't ask us really to give them so like a number of times and I'll, I'll, I'll put this into perspective because I know that it could sound bad, especially the way that I, I'm kind of framing it, but I don't really think it's fundamentally bad is that they never they didn't ask us for any interview questions ahead of time. So many times whenever and this is I think something that's uh, pretty common with like Warcraft and I think there's other companies that do the same thing. Many gaming companies do the same thing. They will ask you to give them the questions ahead of time, so they know. It's, this is like a, this is a, a two-pronged thing, right? This is multi-purpose. Uh, one purpose is obviously so that they're able to uh, filter out any questions that could be uh, that could make them look bad. Obviously, like, oh, why didn't you do this? And uh, you, you know, they don't have a good re answer for it because it's just something stupid to begin with. And so, like, yes, obviously, it's so they can kind of, uh, to a certain degree, craft a narrative. But it's also so they can make sure that they, the time that they invest in the interview is going to be optimized for both themselves and also the audience, which is what the interview is really for. So, like, I understand why uh, different developers and people uh, want to have the questions ahead of time. And I think that logically it makes sense. Uh, but there is something to be said, and I, I prefer, personally an organic interview. Uh, I prefer an interview where I can just go in, ask them whatever I want to ask them. And uh, th they just like, they didn't even really say like any guardrails. They were like, yeah, I just talk about whatever you want to talk about. Uh, you know, that's pretty much about it. I've seen a lot of these interviews, <clears throat> the, um, the interviews uh, with Yoshi P and I even tweeted about this and I said, that the Yoshi P interviews kind of like ruined interviews for me. Because like, if only I usually, so grossly incandescent. most interviews are so incredibly directed and focused. And if you try to, you know, get out of the way to just have like an interesting conversation, they'll instantly rein you back in. And I'm saying this as someone who's conducted a lot of interviews. Like I've done a lot of interviews and... Let me tell you, one of the worst interviews that I've ever done, like I really had a bad time with that interview. And I'm not sure if the person who I was interviewing was upset or what the deal was, but it's like they made sure to give me absolutely nothing. And this was a, a long time ago. It was for Destiny. Uh, it was uh, Deej, who at the time was, I believe that he's left Bungie since, but at the time he was like the big community manager, public relations guy. And I interviewed Deej, and he literally gave me nothing. For my whole interview, I kept asking me thing, asking him things, and he would just like fire back with literally useless blurbs that would give you no information whatsoever. And, and here's the thing, you wouldn't even try to like guide the conversation into a place where we could like have some common ground, talk about something. It, it was just almost like I would ask him something and he'd be like, nope, not answering that. I'd ask him, nope. I mean, he might as well have said it because that's pretty much the way that it went. And I was just like, dude, 
I hated that interview. I really did. I was so frustrated because like I couldn't ask them anything. They might as I might as well have, they might as well have asked me for the questions so they could tell me he's not going to answer a single one of these questions. Think up of something else because that was so bad. But uh, Gosper eighty four, thank you very much for being grossing with us for twenty two months. Tip of the hat. Appreciate the support. Thank you. Yeah, it felt like that. And the Yoshi P interviews are amazing because he even says the stars like, hey, if you guys just want to talk about something completely random, we can talk about something completely random. Like if you guys go watch the Zeppelin interview, they barely talk about the game. It's more an interview about Yoshi P and the stuff that he likes and a couple of funny, interesting things. But, you know, th that's the, the part that is very interesting. Like I would love to interview Yoshi P. I think it'd be amazing. And uh, we got to talk to uh, Yoshi P for a little bit over an hour. And uh, the translator, like, I, like we asked, like, if you wrote down how many words, like, our, our questions were, like, each question was, like, this big. And then, like, each answer that he gave us was, like, this big, right? <laughs> so uh, the fact that, like, she was able to translate all of that was... They got like the best translator too, because like they got different people got different translators. They got the one who was doing the live letter. Really impressive. And I, as somebody who I'm not, I'm not bilingual. I'm not multilingual. Uh, I I only speak American here. So uh, to me, I, I think that's impressive just fundamentally. Now the reason, uh, like most of my content, I, I didn't has ask a lot of like very on uh, game specific questions, like inside of Final Fantasy. Because I feel like because I'm not a tenured player in the same way that somebody like, I, I don't know, like Zeppla, um, uh, Zeno, uh, Sifa, um, Mr. Happy, like any of these other guys that are making content about the game, um, these guys know the game a million times better than I do. And they'll be able to ask questions way, way, way better. So we are able to ask them a lot of questions about... But I think that there's um there's a degree there where you know, I actually didn't find the interviews that were much more mechanically specific as interesting, even though, you know, I know the mechanics, I know how the game works, I know most of these things. But when you're watching an interview and someone's like asking a, a super specific question about healing. It's like, I get it, I think it's cool and all, but I don't think that it has as much appeal, and I don't think it's necessarily what 14 needs right now, because 14 right now is going through a moment where there's a lot of new people coming into the game, and maybe they don't care that much about that super specific, are scholars gonna suck, you know, like, st stuff like that, right? So I find that the generic interviews are... Um, are more compelling they're more interesting to watch personally like you know different different people want to watch different things which is why i think that there's a, a it's a good thing that there's a breadth of content out there where people are asking about different topics so that if someone wants to hone in on a very specific thing i think that's great but i think that the generalistic interviews are really really cool and that would be more what i would like to to ask because like i could ask hyper specific things about paladin versus friggin gunbreaker and like let's talk let's really get down to the nitty-gritty of the paladin magical rotation and can we change some can we change maybe uh what's it called royal authority and replace that with atonement when we go into the royal authority combo and do all of these different things like it's not as interesting as like you know the the um, the thing that Yoshi P said in there, it's like, it's, it's like these other developers don't play their own game. <laughs> see, see, now that's, now that's a cool ass comment. <laughs> Just like in general, uh, MMOs and. I, yeah, I, I agree with Mr. Soul It's really good. And it's refreshing to hear like developers. And this is one of the uh, biggest takeaways I had from uh, the interview is that it was really refreshing to hear developers and, and game only, designers uh, talking about so other games that they play and also having Shields some of the up. same thoughts and frustrations that players do Just running, thank you very because much being i think like there's months. been a problem and Tip this is especially true I, I feel like this has been especially true with like a lot of western game development and i'm not really sure if it's a western game development exclusive problem it could be happening more in in other places too like eastern game development etc right south american but I know that for what I see a lot is there's been like a growing resentment between the players and the developers where it's like, 
uh, battle for Azeroth, I made the joke, right, is not between Horde and Alliance or Horde and Alliance versus Nazoth. It's between the players and the developers. Like, this is... Th this is it's been like that for a while. Of, of, ...of interaction to have. It's almost like, like, you ever go to, like, a stream and there's people that are constantly, like, it's like they're at war constantly with their audience and, like, they don't like their audience but they're streaming because they feel like they have to or something like that. And it's just one of the most uncomfortable things to ever uh, to ever experience, right? And like Quinn is not a good example, right? Because Quinn, it's just like <laughs> memeing, it's jokes. Everybody's there for fun. But I'm talking about serious. Just couldn't find the yields. Uh, uh, serious vitriol. The yields were hiding. Serious frustration. Serious anger, right? Or, or disappointment, or whatever you want to call it. So, um, like, I know I've been in that place before uh, with like classic WoW and uh, Dark Souls, and it's just like it's such a bad place for content to be in. And I think that a lot of times with the... Did he struggle with his audience during Dark Souls? Did people seriously give him a bad time with Dark Souls? I guess, I guess a lot of the Souls community does tend to be like, do this, do that, play like this, play like that. Can't believe you didn't pick up this weapon and did this optimal thing. Good God. More like backseating and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot of that, unfortunately. Unfortunately, there is a lot of that. I remember we had a little bit of that when Hengist beat the crap out of... Like, there were some people that were genuinely upset, but that was hilarious for me. I was just like, get, get mad. <laughs> like, I give a fuck. Get mad. There was like, oh, he broke the game with a Black Knight halberd. It's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Yeah. Uh with a lot of game development nowadays you almost have like the developers see themselves as uh, i think above is probably a word that i don't know if it's really that that strong but i think that they see themselves as different than the players where the developers think that they um i need to get one of those their understanding of the game and their uh their development of the game somehow in that experience somehow supersedes the the experience of the player so like for example uh in, in warcraft whenever uh people said they didn't like titan forging and the developer said well it's okay because it'll even out in the long run and everybody will be happy right what you're really saying is that the way that you feel is wrong and you're stupid for feeling that way and big surprise people don't like to hear that this is something that's happened many times whenever you have developers that are trying to uh they're trying to introduce some form of ideology into the game we see this a lot now with warcraft um but we've seen it with plenty of other things as well and it's just uh it's incredibly frustrating to see and i think it's really nice to see someone like it's it's just out of touch they're, they're just completely out of touch when you it, it's one thing to you know to appease everything that your your players are saying to, to try and follow every little comment be like Oh, this guy didn't like this dungeon. This guy didn't like this quest. This guy. That's one thing. Okay. You, you shouldn't have to like appease every single individual. But when a bunch of people tell you that like, look, Titan forging is a piece of shit mechanic. And, and they're just like, nah, it's fine. It's like everybody tells them, hey guys, uh, fucking this, this, as it, what was it called? I even forget the name. As right, as right armor is a piece of shit. When a majority of the player base is telling them Azerite is a piece of shit. They're like, no, nah, it's fine. It's great. It's fantastic. And then what happens? Everybody agrees. Yeah, Az even they, after, after like the expansion's over, they're like, yeah, Azerite wasn't really that great. So what do they do? They went ahead and they did like the, the Chains of Domination nonsense. Their, their Sockets of Domination or whatever the fuck it was. And there's like, no, nah, this is going to be great. And players are like, yeah, it's going to be great. Why don't you go play it yourself, motherfucker? We're going to go play something else. That's kind of like the the overall response from the World of Warcraft I player base. They're so just like, you think it's so great? Why don't you go play it yourself? You clearly haven't been doing so, dumbass. Kednet, thank you very much for being real. Something like that's for 14 months. Tip of the hat. Appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Asmon actively dislike Dark Souls is going to watch a Dark Souls stream. People who like the game. He didn't like Dark Souls? Why'd he play Demon Souls? 
I don't think he didn't like Dark Souls. He talked at length about how he beat the game. He hate watched an entire eight-hour video about why the game sucks and agreed 100% of it. I don't know. I think we're lacking a bit of context there. I think that needs more context than, than that, in my opinion. Like Yoshi P, talk about how he's playing other games, and then in the process of playing other games. And, and how about something else about the Yoshi P interviews, how he's not actually scared of saying the names of other games like he's, like he's going to summon a fucking demon. Because, like, you try to get... Any other developer to like say the name of a game in an interview that's like summoning fucking Satan or something is like, oh no, we can't talk about that game. That's in the competition. We don't talk about that. And Yoshi P just like openly talks about fucking Ultima Online, World of Warcraft. You talked about New World. He doesn't give a fuck. And that's awesome. I uh, talk about some of the frustrations that he's had and those frustrations being basically the same thing that players are experiencing and yeah. oh it was about dark souls 2 not dark souls 1 ah oh, that's perfectly understandable then yeah ego developers right and i think that like it's okay to have an ego but if you have a big ego for something you have to be doing it right like the moment that you um the moment that you do something and you have a big ego and it turns wrong then everybody is there to shit on you yeah, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to deal with it or anything like that. So I think that's that's very common as well. Square Enix isn't like overprotective girlfriend. Yeah, well, the thing if is, like, a lot I of them are players and enjoyers of the game. And so uh, because they're, they're playing their Happy own game months. a lot and they're enjoying it a lot. All right, Deviant, thank you very much. Because those people for six months, are doing that, tip of the hat. there's going to be a lot of them support, that actually you. want to hear the feedback that someone like me is giving because i'm also a player so it's like a matter of shared interest i'm going inside i left my quesadilla out there that is going to be a present for the raccoons so anyway what i wanted to say and uh, just to wrap everything up w whenever we have a developer or a person who is their understanding of the player base and they get the same problems that the player base has i think that's the most important thing because one of the biggest issues is like sometimes developers don't play the game the way that players play the game. And in the process of not playing the games the way players play the game, guess what happens? A lot of those players experience things that, that the developers don't and, and vice versa. That, that's pretty much all I've got for today, guys. I just wanted to come in and uh, talk about uh, the stuff with uh, Final Fantasy. Uh, game's looking great and uh, I'm really excited for Endwalker. I hope to be back streaming uh, soon. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see you guys very soon. And I'll let you guys know whenever anything happens. Until next time, boys. Peace. Yeah, I agree with most of the stuff he says. I, I watched this, uh, this interview already. I'm not going to be watching it on stream. It's a fantastic interview, though. I would highly, highly, highly recommend you guys watch it. It is really, really good. It is very refreshing to see uh, a developer... Because, like, he did, I believe, within the span of, like, a couple of days, he did, like, 32 interviews. 32 interviews. So friggin' awesome. But, yeah, 14. Like I said, guys, November is taken. <laughs> It'll be so good.